so welcome back to 2018 uh, start of the season for me and um, getting my boat ready uh, even keel uh, my leisure 17 uh, just today I'm down at Ross money uh, I'm going to show you the boat but I also show you what Ross money looks like and what wonderful sailing area it, it is um, it's a gorgeous day today as well you can see the Sun is in my eyes um, but you can see just behind me here I'm going to just move the camera away from me and just to show you this is Ross Money. Uh, <clears throat> these boats are predominantly all part of the Mayo Sailing Club. Uh, this is the pier, jetty, all the mooring boats, boats moored out there. And then the channel veers around to the left, out through that gut for anybody who saw my video last year, highlighting where the gut is to uh, exit the uh, Ross Money Bay. Uh, but you can way off the distance go off in that direction uh, on a shallow boat through a channel and head up into the north of the bay. Uh, I keep my boat just that red car there on the pier just behind that is a little estuary of a little river uh, way over there and I just keep mine tucked in over there and over here the bay ends this is just the end of the bay here and car park. So currently I am still on the hard um, Lots of work done to get the boat ready. It's the uh, towards the end of May. I'm a bit later than I wanted to be, but done a number of jobs. Uh, I'll just quickly highlight some of them. Um, anybody with a furler, a plastimo furler, will know that these screws have a tendency to come out because of vibration. And last season, that's exactly what happened to me. So these screws here came out, and this section here parted so when I was hoisting the sail the frame came away and the sail couldn't move up the track and it got jammed and it got torn and so on and so forth so this season uh, this winter I had to find replacement screws and I couldn't find replacement screws so I had to find nuts bolts sorry and cut them to size and then I've masticked them in with a bit of adhesive into the the slot to try and keep them in there and stop them coming popping back out with the vibration that this goes through as you can imagine so that's done the whole way along um, that was a real job little baby hacksaw cutting them away to size um, and just fitting them back into place so anybody who has this check these put some adhesive into it keep them from vibrating out I've taken them all out where I can uh, other jobs I've done sand it back the handrails two degree timber work on it two degree it's okay three coats of varnish gone on that 50 percent 50 50 uh mixture on the first coat because i literally took it back to bare wood um, got there. Uh, i've cleaned up i've done a lot of work on top uh, i've yet to anti fouler but i'm just waiting to get a supply of anti -fowler. um the job i did here down at the bottom of the skeg. Sorry, a bit noisy here. Here's something that people might be familiar with with the Leisure 17. Um, this is the skeg. This is the shoe at the bottom. And down here, this well, this disappeared on me one winter. It got bounced off the rocks when it was on the near a pier, and it came away. And you can see it's slightly damaged still there to this day. But I got a, from Jerry Askham on the Leisure Zones Association, sent me a replacement shoe, these shoe, and this is basically holding the, the weight of the, um, the rudder itself. But these bolts, a bit of feedback for Jerry, these bolts are too, the, the holes are too small, very, very small. So to get a nut or a bolt to go through that. So last year I had difficulty and it came out. So when I took the boat out of the water this year, uh, there was only one bolt. Um, holding this whole thing on, so I nearly lost the second one. But anyway, I've managed to resecure a proper bolt in on the other side. Um, I'll have to get some epoxy and do a job on that because that's not looking the best. Uh, I don't want it to get wet. Anyway, at the moment, that's what's done. So it's a job done. It was a bit of a pain. So I just climb up. It's a bright day today now. So. Other jobs I've done here, I haven't painted the boat, but I have varnished her all over, um, particularly sunlight on my tiller. I did my tiller. I took it off for the winter and I 
stripped it right back to the beer timber and I gave her six coats of, uh, of varnish. 50% um, on the first one, the bird poop, 50% on the first one and then worked graduated my way up to getting the final polish and it's, you have to admit, uh, well I think it is looking very respectable. And then I did the other side with the timber here. These have took these all the way back as well. Brought them back to a nice finish. Uh, did the grab rails and did the, uh, the hatch covers. So that's them. Uh, inside then I haven't done as much as I wanted. But got some jobs done in here. Both very hot. Um, I sealed the window. <laughs> Those of you who saw my video last year, I was commenting on the window. So I took all that apart and resealed it. I know it looks not the prettiest, but it's well packed with proper adhesive. But one of the biggest jobs I did this year was the floor. That should look respectable on the camera. Um, what I did was I removed the uh, compression post completely, took it out. Uh, and that enabled me to take out the floor and the the shoe that's holding the, the compression post in and took out the floor, the two parts of the floor here and took them home. Sanded them back completely over the winter and again 50%, 50-50 on the first coat, soaked in the varnish and then worked my way back up to full gloss finish and then re-secure uh, re the compression post back in, used a uh, uh, spirit level to make sure it was straight on all angles and then I re-secured these screws at the bottom and they weren't secured before and then I repositioned these screws and I repositioned the uh, joint really metal joint between the two boards and this is laminated teak maybe I'm not sure it's a redwood it's really tough uh, it was okay condition underneath it was a bit wet but it's okay anyway so that's all re-secured so arguably that is it looks okay I think on camera but it looks okay in reality too um, but it's a lot better than it was and the rest of the boat is I have all the stuff still at home so I haven't refitted it out I didn't as yet complete the electrical work but I have bought a lot of the uh, necessary equipment and cables and batteries and uh, switches and everything so I have bought a lot of stuff over the winter to do the work of replacing well all of this with some obviously new wiring a uh, battery will go in the stern locker and i have straps for that uh, then i will make a cabinet for here all right i'll make a cabinet to sit here with a switchboard and a fuse board and an off switch and a main fuse all of that will probably go here more than likely i don't want but i thought about this a lot this does get wet, you know, to some degree for whatever reason. I didn't want the battery there. Certainly not, not here in the west of Ireland. I mean, I don't know other parts. Maybe it's okay, but not for me. So, the um, battery goes in the locker. I run the cable back here and replace the current ones that are there. The one area, one piece of equipment I do want is the uh, auto helm. Uh, you can see there's a little power cable just there and this is the that's the power for it just here and that clip is in the wrong spot for the auto helm it needs to be here maybe or here so i have to recite that otherwise at the moment the water helm is too big for the current position it just it's too far to the center and it will not operate so uh they're the main jobs i've done um i've Replace, I uh, took my head sail back to the sail maker in uh, West Sails in, in Galway where Yannick uh, repaired the whole seam. It had gone completely. Uh, the UV impact is colossal and uh, that needs to be redone. So he did an excellent job on that. Now, obviously I haven't put it up yet but it looked, it looked perfect and it's a better nick than it had been for the last couple of years. So that's nice to be able to look forward to that. Um, and that's most of the jobs that I'm going to do in order to get the boat into the water and anti foul it and then lift her in off the pier over there just put her in with the crane just pop her in uh, which I normally do and off I go that may be the next couple of weeks so it gives me a bit more time to finish some jobs clean the inside of the boat 
just give it all a clean. I just have this towel drying here. The cushions are all the other cushions are all at home. And just clean it all. It, it's not bad. There's no mold in here, which is great because sometimes there's lots of mold. Um, that's the, just a bucket where I had all my varnish and bits and pieces and I'm gonna keep the W40. Actually, here's a what did I see recently about WB40? Cleaning glass and cleaning uh, windows and, and headlamps and cars and stuff. Uh, great video on that. Just as an afterthought, you might want to, somebody want to do that if you're in the need for cleaning. Other than that, um, the rest of the boat is just stripped and ready to be refitted out. So, the next couple of weeks uh, or so, it's a superb weather now. It's a pity I can't get out, but I'm working. I can't get away, so I'm not losing out really because I'm not here to take advantage of the boat anyway. But it'd be nice to have it in as soon as I can and uh, make use of it when the opportunities do come up. So yeah, I hope. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, good luck to everybody who's sailing and stay safe and wear your life jacket. Okay, goodbye.